Welcome to beautiful Madrid, one of Spain's most popular cities. This year, Vital Options International took on its seventh year providing on-site coverage of the signature gathering, the Essential ESMO Congress. The European Society of Medical Oncology combined the efforts of the most important European oncology professionals with the aim of improving prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and the care of cancer patients. And the timing could not have been better. From new therapies and cutting edge technologies to the role of the patient advocacy organizations, this ESMO gathering represented the finest that the oncology community has to offer. Vital Options was there to capture the highlights, the insights, and the stories behind the science from oncology's most insightful thought leaders and most accomplished advocates. This is how Vital Options International is truly generating global cancer conversations. I'd like to introduce uh, Lucia Trovado, and uh, we need a microphone over here for her because she's going to tell. She, she is actually a psycho oncologist at the clinical center of the Champlimaux Center for the Unknown in Lisbon, Portugal. And Lucia, you've been very, very involved in the CanCon uh, guide. I, I don't know if you're going to talk about that now, but you please do mention it so that everybody is aware of the part that rehabilitation plays in. Okay, thank you. Kathy, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm also past president of the International Psycho-Oncology Society, and we have been participating since the European Partnership on Action Against Cancer, which then evolved into the cancer control in Europe, in a number of projects that have the aim of improving and recognizing uh, patients' psychosocial needs. As you know, cancer has a multifolded impact, so it not, does not only impact the physical domain, but also the psychological, the social, the sexual, the cognitive, the family, uh, the professional, etc. So all these areas is what we need to address when patients face cancer. And in our area, the psycho-oncology area, what we face is that patients uh, with a diagnosis of cancer feeling the physical symptoms of the disease and the treatment, the side effects of the treatment, it disrupts their normal life, as you know. And so it creates what we have coined the term of distress as to separate it from mental health problems because a cancer patient does not have a mental problem. They have uh, psychological suffering from reduced expectations of being healthy and not being able to do the things that they want to pursue. So we found out in the research that we have been doing since uh, last century, since the 50s in the last century, that in fact distress impacts severe distress that can go into anxiety and depression, does impact not only on the quality of life of the patient, but also on their clinical outcomes, such as survival. So uh, the International Psycho-Oncology Society has put forward a standard in which distress should be assessed as the sixth vital sign after pain. So you know that pain took a long while until being recognized as a need that needed to be addressed. Also distress, if you don't assess it as, for instance, with a distress thermometer, uh, it will tend to go unrecognized. And patients usually do not disclose this suffering to their clinicians because they think, well, I, I have cancer, I have to suffer. And so they go on with this burden, this added burden of psychological suffering 
along with other suffering. So because we want to stop this, we have made a call for uh, bringing distress to be assessed in clinical centers where patients are treated to be assessed as the sixth vital sign. And also there should be resources of psychosocial care for patients so that these needs could be addressed and properly addressed. So when we discuss rehabilitation, and uh, as Kathy was mentioning, what we wanted to do in CanCon with the European Guide for Quality Comprehensive Cancer Care with a chapter of rehabilitation and survivorship in which we collaborated among other stakeholders with the European Cancer Patients Coalitions and other groups of uh, stakeholders is that rehabilitation is a patient's right along with treatment. So if the treatment is going to bring you side effects, we should not let this be you know, left to the patient. It's our responsibility, the clinicians and the politicians, to take care of that side as well. So the concept that we introduced, not only in this guide, but that has been discussed, is that rehabilitation is not something to go to happen after the treatment, but pre-rehabilitation, before the treatment. So for instance, if we know that a surgery or a radiation therapy for a prostate cancer is going to create a sexual problem, that should be discussed ahead of time with the patient and the couple, if the, the, the patient is interested in that, so that they can devise measures to cope with the problem and not be facing the problem out, uh, afterwards and get depressed or isolated or whatever the reaction, the negative reaction acts. And while the lymphedema, for instance, in many centers, we have a preventive attitude with physiotherapy before the problem begins. And that's what we would like to make, uh, is that rehabilitation is integrated part of a treatment. So when the treatment is planned, already all the areas that need to be addressed should be part of this plan. Now what we have surveyed in EPAC and in the Euroship project, some projects that we surveyed the resources in this area in the different European countries, was that there are seldom resources of this kind. So as Kathy coined it, the patient is lost not only in rehabilitation, but in this transition. And most acutely in the transition from the treatment phase to the survivorship phase. So the patient does not know what to do and it's left alone most of the times with all the, system, the symptoms. So we want this to stop and that's why ECPC and ESMO with the collaboration of the International Psycho-Oncology Society have put down a survivorship guide uh, for patients so that there is the recognition of the areas that need to be addressed, so physical, psychological, social, sexual, cognitive nutrition, to make a checklist of what are each patient's problems and then what are the resources that need to be allocated to each patient so that their survivorship can go smoothly and not stumble. So I have, uh, because this is such an area of need and it's not yet in the political agenda of our country politicians and ministries of health, we have to make a, a, a push for it. And I, I said to Kathy that I would like to make a manifesto action of, of some sort while we are here in this uh, conference or whenever appropriate, but we need to call for action in this area because this is a much underserved area and most of the countries do not have this in place. And so the patient really gets lost into this rehabilitation uh, navigation. So hopefully we can discuss more about it and we can do something together, professionals and patients and families and advocates uh, all together do something to move this forward. We have good guides, we have good recommendations in place, now we need actions. Thank you, Cathy, for your invitation.